Magnus had collected many books from his exploration of the dungeon. He also found an abyssal tome from the powerful slime god. He spent hours poring over these ancient texts, looking for any ideas and clues on how to save his friends. Between the different books, he compiled information about a forbidden summoning ritual that had the power to bridge the gap between the corrupt realm and Terraria. It did this by spreading large amounts of hollowed and corruption. It sounded risky, but from all the things he studied, it seemed like the best option. As with all dark and forbidden magic, there was a catch. In order to start bridging the corruption with the world of Terraria, Magnus had to defeat a giant spawn of the underworld, the Wall of Flesh. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage Let's Play episode. We are playing the Calamity mod on death mode, and we just defeated the Slime God last episode. We've got a lot of upgrades that we can do, but before we do start upgrading, I want to fight the Slime God again and see if we can get a little bit of a cleaner fight. It was so fun, I kind of want to just try it again. We've got our Heart of Darkness, which has got our Rage up. While waiting for the Heart of Darkness, I've been killing enemies, so we've got a bunch of stars all over the arena. So let's go ahead and get this started. I want to try to use this Atheticus weapon right before we use Rage, and that way we can debuff the boss and then go crazy with Rage. So let's get this started. Okay, let's get this up. And now let's go rage on him. And let's see how much damage we can do. Okay, we're doing pretty good. We just need to keep evading. Uh-oh. Oh no. up. There we go. That was a much better clear. I'm a lot happier with that than the first time. This weapon, I was actually hoping it would be better, but a lot of times I was seeing that he was too far away, and so it wasn't actually hitting. And so the frog actually tends to be pretty dang good for this fight. The first time I used this fungus rod for the most part, and that's pretty good too. So a lot of good options for the Slime God. As far as accessories, I used the Heart of Darkness during that fight. And then I, the first fight, I used the Stress Pills. Then we've also got the Counter Scarf, Frost Bark Boots, Frog Legs, and Ladonum. And the Frog Legs are so that we can move really quickly. You can see how fast we drop and how fast we can jump. So that's the goal behind that. So let's open up the treasure bag real quick and see what we got. We've got a summon, we've got another abyssal tome, and we've got another mana overloader. So let's go sell some of this stuff, and the main thing is getting that purified gel. So we've got the statagel armor. So let's craft that, and then let's get the magic statagel cap, and then the statagel greaves. And that'll be a good upgrade from our aerospec armor. We went from 57 defense to 64 defense. And then our damage is 58, and it was 56. So we got a little bit of extra bonuses there. And then it says it increases our magic damage by 10%, decreases magic cost by 10%. It says when you take over 100 damage in one hit, you become immune to damage for an extended period of time. It grants an extra jump and increased jump height. 
Whoa, that's really good. We actually have a ton of mobility just using Frostbark boots. We can get very high. We can almost go the same height as our building. Now that we have purified gel, we can craft a few really awesome upgrades. So the first is the Knight's Ray. It's kind of like the Knight's Edge, but for a magic weapon, it requires the Wand of Sparking, Vile Thorn, Amber Staff, Magic Missiles, True Shadow Scales, and Purified Gel. So let's grab all that, and we'll go over down to our Demon Altars. And there we go, the Knight's Ray. Whoa, that's pretty sweet. It fires a dark ray that splits if enemies are near it. So it looks like a pretty powerful weapon. I did a bit more farming and upgraded our weapons, and now we've got a mythical Knight's Ray and a mythical Abyssal Tome. So I think we are pretty well set for this next boss fight, which is the Wall of Flesh. Between episodes, I crafted an arena. It takes up about half the world, and it's just wooden platforms. Pretty simple. I'm not sure which weapons we're going to use against him. As far as items, I've got Ladonum, the Arrowstone for speed and jump speed. And then we've got Frostbark Boots, of course, for movement speed. And then we've got the Warding Counter Scarf and Menacing Heart of Darkness. Let me show you where the edge of the arena is. We're going to head on over here. And we're getting pretty close. I remember there was a shadow chest. There's a shadow chest right here. And then I think there's one a little bit farther down. That's not really that good. A Hellwing bow. That'd be great if we were doing the bow playthrough again. But Ooh, we got some gold here. I'll take it. There's only five, though. Here's where the other one is. So this one's got the fire flower. It's kind of fun. What? There's another portal? Oh, that's awesome. I'll take whatever I can get. I love that this weapon shoots through walls. Okay, this is weird. We got three portals within like 30 seconds. One thing we're going to need to do... Oh, we got the demon scythe. That's awesome. I've been wanting this spell. That's pretty sweet. If we get up close, it's actually really powerful. While be like before it starts moving. Well, I think our rage is almost up. Ooh, we got an oath sword. Another one? Wow, oh, we're getting so lucky down here right now. Wow, Death Ray is pretty powerful. The one good thing about a Abyssal Tome, though, is there's lots of stuff in the way during this fight. And so it might actually do better because it can shoot through walls and then it kind of explodes. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in. Switch to stress pills. And here we go. I'm going to debuff them. And then throw on rage and start doing some... Oh, I messed that up. But oh well. And if we need some self-heal, we can do the... Uh, Madna Overloader. This seems to be doing pretty well, though. Because we can kind of avoid a little bit. No! 
Okay, that was a bad mess up. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, one mess up and it's over. We're gonna be fine, I think. This time I wanna try it with this ray gun. When I was trying to press rage, I have rage connected to the R button and I kept pressing the E button, which was summoning my slime mount. <laughs> And so I debuffed it with this wand, and then I missed my opportunity to do crazy damage. So that was a bit of a bummer. We've got everything set up. We've got our rage on. So let's throw this in, and let's get this boss fight started. Just making sure I've got everything equipped. We will throw on our rage and just blast them. Okay, it looked like he was too far away and our rage did nothing. <laughs> oh, that's such a bummer. Okay, so we can kind of use our little spots up there to protect us from damage. See how this weapon does. Oh, well, we got a ton of hearts right there. Okay, so here's where we died last time. Oh my gosh, we were so close. 12%. This next attempt, I say we save up our rage and then wait until he's getting close to almost being dead and then we'll blast him with rage at the end. I think this tome was doing a lot better damage than our knight's ray as well, so I think we're just gonna start the fight using the tome. Okay, so this time I'm gonna try using the mana overloader. So I think if we can take advantage of the benefits of the life regen on low mana, we could have some pretty good success. And we'll get this fight going. Let's try to get our mana down. Okay, we're down pretty low. Now we're getting healed. Oh my gosh, this is powerful. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, why was I not using this on my first attempts? <laughs> this is insane. This is so good. Now we're gonna actually get punished by using these. We're gonna need to get our mana down low quickly. There we go, get that heal going. Just pop one potion at a time. We still have our rage saved up. Man, this is so powerful. Okay, once when we get them down to like 25% or so, I wanted to go crazy with our rage. Okay, here we go. Uh 
Uh oh. Man, this mana overloader is insanely powerful on this fight. And this dash is so good too. Okay, that was much better. Whew, we did it. We got the wall of flesh and now we are in hard mode. This is so exciting. I think I might switch to the night ray. Knock these guys out real quick. And I think we're still on auto pause, so let's open this up. We have the charm of luck, that is really good. We've got a bunch of stuff. We have the rogue emblem, we have the summoner emblem, we have the demon heart. We've got the hermit's box of 100 medicines, which allows us to spawn with full health rather than half health. We have a demon trophy, which boosts spawn rates by 1.25. I don't think I'm gonna use that since the spawns are already obnoxiously high. This one is the Wall of Flesh lore. It says prepare to face the terrors that lurk in the light and the dark parts of this world. Place in your inventory to gain increased item grab range. We have the Underworld lore, and then of course we have the Pone Hammer, which we can use to uh, destroy a bunch of demon altars. So let's equip our Hermit's box and let's use our Demon Heart. There we go. That will give us our sixth accessory slot, which means we can put on our Ladonum. And we're in pretty good shape here, but it feels so good to have defeated the Wall of Flesh. And now let's run into the Brimstone biome. Let's do a heal up here. And Let's grab a few essences. I don't think we can break into these houses, so we're just gonna have to go into the ones that we have access to. I think the mana overloader might actually be better to use only during boss fights because my mana stays pretty high outside of a boss fight. Let's see if there's any others, and we should definitely pick up these essences, the essence of chaos because we're gonna have to upgrade lots of stuff now that we are in hard mode. Grab some Hellstone, just in case. Ooh, I think this is a Mimic. Or it's just a treasure chest? Okay, that's definitely a Mimic. This is pretty lucky to get a Mimic this early on. And we got a dual hook, that's good. Okay, let's throw away something, we'll throw away harvester parts. Oh, we got tax collector. Uh, what else do we not need? I guess we can toss some potions. Wow, we got pretty lucky there. A mimic within like a minute of starting the hard mode. And we're at the edge of our world. So let's go ahead back to base. So with our new awesome Abyssal Tome and Night's Ray, I think it's finally time to retire our Fungus Rod, although it should be definitely in the Hall of Fame for best pre-hard mode weapons. We can get rid of our pickaxe because we're gonna need a new pickaxe. So we got our Molten Pickaxe now. And let's see if there's any other things we're missing. I think this is a good place to stop this episode though, and next episode we will start powering up in hard mode, getting new armor sets and awesome new weapons. There's so much to craft at the beginning of hard mode. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. I sure have. It's been a really fun time defeating the wall of flesh and learning just how powerful that mana overloader can be on a long fight where you have low mana. So if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes of Magnus the Mage on Death Mode. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.